Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture here today with Jeanette Gauthier for this episode of Corn School. We're going to be talking about herbicide resistant kochia and water hemp. So welcome Jeanette, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so water hemp and kochia. Now kochia gets talked about across I think pretty much every crop. Um, I personally don't know a lot about water hemp, so talk to me about these two weeds. I would say they're fairly diverse. I mean, kochia being, I, I guess, not native to here, but it, it's well adapted, doesn't mind the cool conditions, really takes advantage of some of our soil salinity, for example, um, but very prolific seed producer. And obviously there's a, a lot of crossing. And so we do see kochia is very able to um, adapt to what we do in the field and we see it a lot in herbicide resistance. And that's something it has in common with water hemp, um, which is something more that we've inherited here, uh, not native, but seems to be doing just fine. Um, so it seems adaptable too. Much different conditions than kochia though. So it, uh, it likes tillage. It, it de doesn't necessarily love uh, salinity. Um, but we're finding in a lot of places it does like water. Uh, so kochia likes dry, water hemp likes water, that's how it gets its name. Um, but very similar in that it's a very adaptable weed too. Um, we have both, um, it's, a, it's a dioecious plant I guess. So both males and females and so we get a lot of crossing, a lot of seed production. And so again, another weed where we are inheriting, not necessarily uh, causing ourselves but seeing a lot of uh, resistance to herbicides. So what are some of the management practices that you can manage? I mean those two I can see them being probably a problem in conjunction because on wet years you're gonna have a problem with water hemp, on dry years you're gonna have a problem with kochia. Um, so what are some management practices that producers could use to get around some of these resistant weeds? I think it's gonna be the advice that nobody wants um, but weeds really like to adapt to the status quo, the way we're doing things. Um, and we like that too, right? As humans, it's like, oh, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna have my oatmeal for breakfast. Um, we really get used to using herbicides that we know work on our farm, work for our weed spectrum. Um, but then when we get weeds like this, and especially kochia that spreads water hemp that comes up on floodwaters and is moving around as well, um, these things throw a wrench in the plan because things that, that were working or you know might have worked even last year are no longer going to work on the farm so it really forces us to look at more integrated strategies that we talk about a lot and then even within herbicides itself we just need to change it up a little bit more unfortunately so a lot of rotation whether it's crop or herbicide rotation or yeah and actually that's a really good point uh, crop rotation for us I think is going to be huge on the water hemp front. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that wheat and canola, um, the herbicides that we currently have can be quite effective, but the crop competition is huge. So that's going to play in our favor. Unfortunately for <laughs> us in kochia, kochia likes to thrive where crops don't necessarily. Um, but honestly, I've seen a lot of people thinking outside the box and, you know, maybe putting in some some hay or a grass mix in areas where the crop's not performing anyways, mm -hmm. right? I think even in the more saline areas, you can throw something like that in and actually helps with salinity as well, right? Yeah, and I've seen that be a great fit when we go out to Western Manitoba. You can definitely see those areas in the field, um, which would be very similar to Saskatchewan, Alberta. You know, your, your salty areas are definitely easy to pick out. And yeah, throwing in something there to manage that part of the field where you know your crop's not going to do as well can, mm -hmm. can be a great way to manage it. How do you, how different is managing these weeds in corn versus let's say canola or you know one of the other crops? Yeah, corn is probably one of the least competitive crops out there. Um, we know that we put corn in with a planter because corn doesn't even like being too close to itself. So for maximum crop performance, we know that we need 
um, adequate space between the corn plants, we also have to keep them weed free. Mm -hmm. And so this leaves us on wide rows, um, you know, uh, areas between plants as well. And especially here in the West, um, we're not as warm as areas like Ontario. And so while corn varieties have come a long way, we really do have to make sure that we're on top of our weeds. Probably one of, um, after singulation and fertility, weed management in the West is probably the one of the most important things you can do for your corn crop. It's good to know. And any words of encouragement for growers uh, as they're growing their corn this year? I would say corn is, is a great crop. I love it because you just have so many different modes of action that you can use. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can use herbicides. Um, so we have a group 15 herbicide uh, called Zidua. You can often find it in combinations with other herbicides as a pre for lots of crops. Um, but in corn and soybeans, it's actually one that you can use in crop as well. And one that is really amazing on something like water hemp. Um, it, it does add to kochia control. It's not as strong on kochia by itself. Um, but this is something where we know that we can plug and play if you want, um, depending on when weeds are emerging compared to your corn, what conditions are like. You can use a really effective or, or tank mix in a really effective product like a group 15 and then also time it. We know we need activating rain. So loads of flexibility there. So that's something that corn, it, it, it might not be the most competitive crop, but in terms of herbicides, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, and that's true for kochia too. Um, do look at something, you have to get it on while the, the kochia is small, but group 27 herbicides, you know, something that's really quite novel for us out West. We've had them for a little bit now, but uh, typically, we're looking at them in our wheat systems, but corn is another great place where we have some really great options. And then when you do tank mix them, and of course, when we're talking about resistant weeds and focusing on herbicides, we do wanna talk about tank mixing. So there's some really great uh, synergies with group 27s if you tank mix with a bromoxynil or an atrazine, say. So that can really help in two ways that you're getting multiple modes of action but also getting some synergy there on, on some of your weeds. Great. Well, thank you very much. And that was Jeanette Gauthier on Real Agriculture. Thank you.